Several years now, there's been a lot of talk about building a Guam museum, but now that finally could become a reality. With me now to talk about the latest with the construction of a Guam museum is Mr. Joseph Cameron, the heads the head of the Department of Chamorro Affairs. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you very much. You know, like I said earlier, people have been waiting a long time to see this museum start to be uh, built. When can we actually see the dirt being turned? We're looking in the very near future, within the next eight to nine months. Uh, eight there to needs nine to months. be yes, there needs to be the architectural and engineering design mm -hmm. component that needs to be completed. Those are the nuts and bolts of building a museum mm -hmm. prior to the actual construction. So, what sort of facility are we looking at? I know that there was a design I could have sworn uh, that came out a couple of years ago. Um, I just can't remember who. In two thousand five, there were. Uh, $25,000 awards mm -hmm. to three uh, architectural firms right. at the equaling to the total amount of $75,000 that was federally funded by the Guam Preservation Trust mm -hmm. in hopes that there will be an opportunity for the conceptualizing of a design, a potential design that would embody an icon for the museum that can be built. Back in 2005 that was completed mm -hmm. and of course there were no funding back then. Right, and now there were I think that museum or the museum, is it still going to be built uh, in the Fort of Pugan area? There are a couple of areas that could be identified within the Hagat area as well, and that's in work in progress, but it's not going to hold back any progress in towards actually erecting the museum itself. Mm -hmm. But Hagat is a very rich, culturally rich, historic uh, village. Where would you like to see it built? I would like to see it built where it's safe, and mm -hmm. that uh, we would not have any problems with flooding and any type of flood zone issues that would uh, make or compromise the, the over, a million over a million artifacts that we currently have in storage. Where are they being stored? Uh, currently we are on the second and the third floor of the DNA building in Hagania. Um, now I understand you just came back from a trip. Tell us about that trip. The American Association of Museums has an annual meeting. Uh, it's composed of 131 subject topic areas that are breakout rooms in Houston, Texas, where there is a 60 million square feet space for just a convention center. Uh, there was a huge, huge expo in reference to technology, uh, equipment, uh, everything and anything that you would anticipate will assist uh, the industry of museum building, programming, and uh, retrofitting, renovations, they were all there. Were there any ideas or, uh, that, you, that you learned at that, uh, at, during your trip that you plan on applying uh, in this new Guam Museum? The new Guam Museum, if it's going to follow the mode of what's going on worldwide, museums are no longer considered just static exhibits. Uh, static exhibits meaning uh, you went there once and you don't come back because you've seen it already and 10 years has passed and the mm -hmm. same exhibit continues. Uh, what needs to happen is it needs to be a living museum. Uh, it needs to move forward with programs that would uh, partner with the community. Of course, our demographics is quite large here in Guam. We have a multi-ethnic grouping of um, individuals who, who've made Guam their home. And we want to envelop those programs that would allow for engagement of humanities, engagement of arts and the exhibits of arts, and the perpetuation of the future of the Chamorro and how its culture and its natural history can be enveloped all as one. Mm. When you say living museum, if you could expand a little bit more, you're talking about like performances? I mean. What, what exactly it it envelops a discussion with the community, number one. Mm -hmm. For example, there are museums worldwide that are sponsoring uh, intellect uh, per perpetuation of the mind. They're not just perpetuating the mind, that they're perpetuating the culture mm -hmm. uh, in, in the artesian uh, the expressions of art, whether it be weaving, storytelling, uh, whether it be static exhibits, whether it be newfound artifacts. And you know, with the military build-up, we're bound to, to come across a lot more artifacts on Earth as a direct result of the, the shifting and the moving around of, of the dirt here in Guam. Mm. Now, I understand that uh, this new museum, it has to attain and retain accreditation, is that right? The best practices of museums nationwide, and for those who could possibly be further uh, funded by the Department of Interior, mm. uh, requires that 
Number one, you have to be accredited, and the accrediting body is the American Association of Museums. I'll be meeting with the president and his staff in Washington, D.C. next week to further discuss those opportunities prior to the groundbreaking, prior to the architectural engineering design phase, and also through the construction phase and the construction management phase. It's very important, and I was told this by many experts in Houston, or at least during the Houston venue, that a museum expert, whether it be in programming, whether it be in exhibiting, whether it be in the architectural design, construction phase, or even the actual construction management, must put in place in that entire government uh, procurement mm -hmm. that there shall be experts in museums uh, in those areas of, of fields and expertise. Without that, then you're basically just building four walls without mm -hmm. any credence towards best practices and how we as a community would like to see the museum become. Traveling exhibits, for example, from different parts of the world can make its way through the Pacific through the Guam Museum. We've already considered partnering and I've already communicated with the Bishop Museum in Hawaii and they're very excited in assisting us in working out the natural history component because we have little to none of that. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the person who started the museum here in Guam back in 1932 with the naval government ended up being the curator and the director of the Bishop Museum back in 1932. We have lots of stuff over there at Bishop Museum and they're willing to share that and repatriate it back to Guam as well as other places like Acapulco, Spain and France and various mm -hmm. other countries. Well, I know that you've been a part of perpetuating the island culture for a, for a long time uh, here on Guam. How does it feel to, to finally see you know, this coming into reality? I think it's very important. The visitor industry uh, is one component. The local component is, is, a, is a very critical juncture here. We want our children to grow up. We want our children to grow up knowing that there is culture. And sometimes, you know, if, if there's something tangible that you can look, you can mm -hmm. see, you can smell, there's something interactive about your culture, it speaks volumes. And of course, we've heard over the past that the tourists that come from throughout Asia and the world are looking for that uh, part of the culture, is the exposure to a museum. And like you and I, every time we've ever traveled to other cultures, we've always looked at the possibility of going to their museums to see who, what, where, why. And I th think it's important that Guam tells its story. Okay. Any final comments? Yes, I would like to announce that on July 2nd, on Saturday, we have the Guam Museum Foundation Golf Tournament. It's the fourth uh, tournament that we'll have. It's the fourth annual. And it'll be held at the Country Club of the Pacific at 11.30 is the shotgun. And one of the things I would like to also announce is that there will be uh, four opportunities for a hole-in-one. Uh, Nissan Infinity will give a car. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Bank of Guam will give $15,000 cash. And uh, 76 will give uh, 7,600 gallons of gas plus $2,400 in cash. And Cars Plus uh, will be giving a scooter partnering with Royal Bix at 5,000 cash. And the food will be donated by Capriciosa, wonderful venue. And Ambrose will be providing beverages and Budweiser, of course. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us.